Hello, Shalom. I was doing some intense research for the last, um, I guess, about a week, week and a half. It's been a continuation over the course of several months, and it just he keeps building this line upon line, precept upon precept. And I took some time to rest, and um, so this is by no means finished, but it's a start. So just you know, look through it, and you know, do your own research again because he is definitely speaking, and it's really cool. And he's in the process of restoration. So how cool is that? So this is a ancient Phoenician ship. So what's really cool is. I was thinking about some things, and I had went to a restaurant, um, a, see a Mediterranean type restaurant. In the restaurant, on their menus, they had an ancient Phoenician ship, and I talked to the guy. He's from the Middle East, and I said, "Huh?" I said, "That's very interesting. I've been doing research on the Phoenicians for quite a while now. We have an archaeologist in our congregation, and I've been I had asked him some questions before." And I said, it seems like the Phoenicians were already here. And he says, yes, they were. So I thought that was really funny. And so that kind of, you know, was another layer of what he's been talking about. And I think, um, you see, Nordstrom Woman had a video about um, Ezra's, uh, I guess, the second Ezra's from the um, uh, books that weren't canonized. And so what was really interesting is that there was this term that she spelled, which I'm really glad she did, was Arzareth. And so that got me thinking. I was like, huh, because I think that I that sounded familiar. Like I know there was something to that. So I started doing a little bit of digging. And I've heard about this from Christopher Columbus about the land of Arzareth. And this was, and this is what came up. And I did a table on this. So, Arzareth, and I'll link this. The name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses, until the time of the restoration. According to Ezra's Columbus identified America with this land and I had heard about that before So it was kind of like oh boy. I think we're on to something here <laughs> The name has been suggested by this person is taken from Deuteronomy um, 24 to 27 because they forsook the covenant of the Lord or the sovereign and went and served other Elohims the sovereign rooted them out of their land and cast them into another land, which would be Erez Ha Haret, as this day. This passage is made to refer in the Mishnah to the ten tribes. I think it's compared to these things here, but different opinions are expressed by Akiba and Eliezer. The traditions are rather confused as to the names. Um, and so it's not the point that the other land is argued it's the point as this day to signify as the day goeth but does not return so shall they who are cast off not return the other explains the words as the day begins with the darkness of night but turns into day so shall the darkness of their banishment be turned into bright daylight and so the fourth book of Esdras took the latter view which was adopted by Yudha Hanasi, and so it refers to Isaiah chapter 13. So I was like, oh, that okay, that makes sense. So what I wanted to do is I found a root. So Arza is mentioned one time in the Tanakh. Okay, so... It only occurs one time in the Bible. It belongs to Chief of Staff, King Elah of Israel, in whose house the latter was drinking when he was assassinated by Zimri, one of his military commanders. Now this is going to be a little bit, okay, think big picture here. And not globally, but think of it as one big landmass. 
in Eris, can also, meaning Earth, occurs all over the Semitic language spectrum. Okay, um, and possibly also comes from a root meaning Terra. And this is really um, a lot to read here, and I'll let you go through it. But it's also, um, I was talking to my um, Hebrew teacher, so I was making sure I was trying to figure out the Arza, which would be A-R-Z-A. And I said, well, I know the R is the Resh, and so we were trying to figure out the F. And, he, and so I kind of, I think I did, but it did come up anyway. So we'll see. You know, but I thought it was very interesting. Um, the word land, but it should be remembered that in, in, in antiquity, a land is not defined as an era marked by borders and such, but rather as an area in which a specific culture existed that was based on a specific body of knowledge. In the broadest sense, from literature to agriculture to rules of engagement of other cultures. So. Our westernized thinking is really um, terrible when it comes to history, um, his story through each of the cultures and the land. So likewise, the land of death of which Job speaks so pungently should not be understood as a physical place somewhere, but rather a place where no knowledge can be enjoyed or traded and nothing grows. So this is going to be a little bit, take some time to go through this. because. What happened is, again, I, I'm being drawn to Esther, and it talks about in, let's see here, this one. Oh, yeah, this is really cool. So we're in the Septuagint again. Again, he's not done yet. <laughs> it is a very prophetic book. And one of the things that's really cool is chapter 10. It talks about he remembers the dream that's in the beginning, okay? There was a little fountain which became a river, and there was light and sun and much water. The river is Esther, whom the king married and made queen. And the two serpents are I and Ammon, A-M-A-N. And the nations are those nations that combine to destroy the name of the Jews. But as for my nation, this is Israel, even they that cried to God and were delivered. For the Lord delivered his people. The Lord rescued us out of all the calam calamities. And God wrought such signs and great wonders as have not been done among the nations. So it talks about he had ordained two lots. One for the people of God and one for all the other nations. And these two lots came for an appointed season and for a day of judgment before God and for all the nations. And God remembered his people and vindicated his inheritance. And they shall observe these days in the month of Adar. So, and it says, In the fourth year of the reign of Plotlamus, Cleopatra. And so I thought that was really something. And um, they obtained joy. And so it was so interesting to go through and read this again. I, I keep... Again, keep rereading it and rereading it because I get more and more out of it every time. Now, what's also interesting is I had this concept. Okay, so we're looking at a prophetic book, but it because it talks about the isles of the sea, the islands. Okay, so you have all these um, locations here, and it was decrees and things that were ordered by Haman to, to destroy the Jews, like edicts. And I'm thinking, oh, isn't it executive orders like that? They're like edicts sent to destroy the people of the land. So here they were able to defend themselves against it. So I thought that was really kind of a neat prophetic picture that they went to war and they defended themselves against those that were set on destroying them and so one of the other things that was really interesting is the fact that <laughs> this is kind of step on some toes but that's okay because 
I think people are tired of being told that, okay, you have to have this much blood or you have to come from this line or this line in order to be considered whatever. But here it says, in every province and in every city where the sovereign's command and decree came, the Jews, that's Yudim, had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land were becoming Yudim. For the fear of the Jews had fallen on them. So they were becoming Jews. In one translation, it actually says circumcised. So I'll let you think about that for a while. <laughs> so they were becoming, here it is in this one, in this translation. For the Jews there was light and gladness, joy and honor in every each and every province and in each and every city wherever the king's commandment and his decree arrived there was gladness and joy for the jews a feast on a holiday and many among the peoples of the land became jews for the dread of the jews had fallen on them so i'll let the word just speak for itself there's some there's something in people and this is who i'm calling to that know there is something that they have been put in there and they've been told you know like I've experienced myself prejudice that because I was not of a certain or looked a certain way that I would not be considered Jewish <laughs> when my mother's side of the family is encoded in her mom's mom so her my mom and my grandmother is in numbers um, chapter 8 so I know what people, I know what, I just feel like this is out there and this is really going to help kind of solidify some things. And, and I'll show the table that I was doing. Let me make sure that I got this saved though. So I want you to be able to go back to it. So this is all my research here. Alright, so I can close some windows finally. Alright. See if this came up. So it got me thinking here. Polynesian DNA found in ancient Native American bones. Okay, I'll let you go through and read this. There's also somebody who's done research, Bennett Greenspan, Family Tree DNA. He's done research about um, the Cherokee line and um, and how they have found some of this stuff in here. So I thought this was very interesting, especially in light of um, Phoenicians. So, and the oldest Ten Commandments um, were found in Ohio. So here's some more research. Um, one of my friends and I were talking about, um, they found some Paleo-Hebrew in a mound in Ohio. So I'll link this for you also. Here's another um, research you can do, and it's called, interesting here, it is Old Souls in a New World. And so I went through and I was reading this and it talks about um, a lot of different things in here, but the history of some of the things. And I will link this so you can look through this yourself. And let's see here, what else is there? There's another research. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've done a lot of research. The Holy Stones found near Newark, Ohio, Dr. Yitzhak Levine. So he goes through and he hears pictures of some of the things that were found and about the ten tribes. And so when I did the table, I'll show you this. I did, I did three tables on this. So you can go through this and look through this yourself. So we did Arza. Okay, I already did that. Sorry, I got that linked. I got this one right. Okay. So here is the first table I did. 
It's at a skip of 629, Joel 3.3 to Yonah 3.10. My access term was the A, so it would be A, Aleph, Resh, um, the Z, Aleph, and so I went ahead and added the Resh and the top to make the th sound. So that way, and it and it came up. So I thought that was really interesting. So if it's wrong, you know, oh well, I tried. <laughs> but it did come up in this table with brethren and ten. And here is the access term, which was started here. And other terms be it came in. So what I did was I looked at, here's the beginning of it. Let me, sorry, I'm sorry, this way. It goes straight down, starting this way, and ends with the, the Tav right here. And then Israel, so it's Israel, and then also I'm, it, it, it can come up Jewry. So when it says they became Jews, I know that Yuda people from the tribe of Judah is Jews, but it's not necessarily only that. So I don't want people to try to rob other individuals of their identity when, when there's something going on deep inside your kishkas. That's Yiddish for your deep within your innermost being that he's stirring something up. And that's the real Chukadash stirring um, the waters inside you, okay? And that's again, that's my, you know, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. That's, that's who I'm talking to. Okay. Now, this one, of course, that was Israel that you, sh you saw that river. So remember how it said that Esther became a river? And then we have E Z E R, which is treasure. Of course, Ohio, <laughs> because, um, Cincinnati at one time was the gateway to the West. Okay, so there is something about this going on here because also in the green right here is Torah. So some of these ancient tribes, from what I've done the research on, came over like in 212 um, BC and they were kicked out <laughs> because they did not keep the commands, but they kept the commands in this obviously in the, this country or this province, if you want to call it that. Um, commandments, of course, Torah, uh, kinsmen's in here. And then exile, and they were exiled. Okay, so gateways in here. And then what was really interesting is the province of Ad Adalia, A-D-A-L-I-A, -A, that was in Esther because each of those provinces were talked about that. So I thought that was really interesting and it came up with this table at a skip of 629. See, mariner or maritime. And gateway. So Ohio apparently was a gateway at one time. So that's that table. Here's New York. So I did New York as a search because obviously um, this is the research now. I wanted to bring this up because this is important. And remember, it's not what we think, it's what Abba thinks. And it's what was or originally established. So it talks about how New York was originally the capital of our country for an entire year. And he went from Mount Vernon and began his trek to New York City, stopping first at Fredericksburg, Virginia to visit his mother, Mary. The last time the two would see each other, she was 82 and was suffering from breast cancer. So this George Washington mother, was this was the last time he'd ever see her and she prayed over him. And um, he visited Alexandria, Georgetown, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Trenton, and other locations. So for one year, 
New York was our capital, and then for 10 years, Philadelphia was our capital before it was moved to DC and all the other garbage that happened with how they did that set up like Rome. <laughs> so if you remember Jonathan Kahn's book, it talks about you know the covenant that um, was established with George Washington because he prayed at that um, in New York. So I wanted to at least get that out because I think that's a good concept to remember that DC, the District of Columbia, was not our original capital. So here is New York. So starting here in the red. Where is my mouse? New York. Okay. Going down straight down here. It's at a skip of 1037 from Genesis 12:5 to Genesis 26:8. Again, Leah, Rachel, uh, Ketuba. Um, here we have orb or star or planet. Um, river. And again, which was really neat as Ezra came up in here. And Ezra was where the original term Azareth came up. Of course, it's not the one that's canonized, okay? And let's see here, what else came up? Oh, and then this one is going down in a skip. Let's see, what is this? Offspring. Yes, this is offspring right here. The offspring of Leah and Rachel. And New York was a harbor, and of course you know that, and everyone came through, a lot of people came through Ellis Island, and I'm not sure a lot of people came in through um, North Carolina. And there were ships that came over from in that area. So again, you know, think of uh, provinces, and where this is like the concept of province. So there's that, and then here is a yet another table. New York. This is in a skip of 97 Psalms 74 6, Psalm 78 2. Again, New York is the access term. Starting at the bottom and going up. Right here, starting at the bottom and going up. And then here's Arza, which is over here. So I did just the route that I could find. Okay imperishable, monumentous, uh, monumental, timeless, perpetual. So I did indigenous, it came up. So indigenous, native born came up. Of course, Indian. Um, and also, again, it says Indian or Hindu, but again, that has applicable meanings for indigenous tribes, which we know <laughs> we're here already. Sailor, mariner, salt, Okay, that's a very interesting concept. Salt, okay. Uh, Yaakov, Rachel, Leah, 10, Mound Builders, because we did it, we saw the article about the, the Mound Builders, Builder, um, Foundation, Corner Horn, uh, Capital, because that would have been capital of New York. Riches, capital, capital, chief, alliance, treaty, covenant, pact, chief, again, um, paramount, leading, region. And so I put in province as like as through the provinces and it came up in here so I wanted to um, put this out so you can look through this but I just thought that was really something again this is more than just you know one area this is talking about all these provinces and wherever his people are and I thought also it was really cool <laughs> he kind of has a sense of humor so, in this one, I ran across this, and I didn't get to put this in the other video, but who do we have flying to Philly on her broom? <laughs> I just thought that was interesting, especially coming up 
that Philadelphia was the capital of our um, country for 10 years before they moved it. So at least this is according to wall builders here. So um, do your research. I hope this blesses. And if, you're, if Abba is stirring in your heart about his Sabbaths and about his appointed times, then do your research and keep them because you won't be disappointed in it. So hope you have a great day. Shalom.